So I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Junior Lescott. I'm the Knowledge Transfer Specialist on the CalMerit project here with the University of Wolverhampton. And what I'd like to do is to just talk a little bit about additive layer manufacturing. And we're going to frame it under the heading of the powder bed fusion process. Um, and basically, uh, this falls into uh, two flavors. You have laser uh, powder bed fusion and electron beam powder bed fusion. So we're going to be covering uh, the following points. Uh, first of all, we're going to be looking at uh, design freedom and how that is achievable with additive layer manufacturing. Uh, then we're going to be considering the type of materials that we can use. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Uh, but it's just some of the, the metal powders that we could be, we could be using uh, with uh, powder bed fusion. Um, then we're going to have a look at uh, the manufacturing improvements uh, that one can achieve with additive layer manufacturing. We're also then going to touch on quality and in particular in process quality. This is quite fascinating with regard to additive layer manufacturing. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the top tips of design for additive manufacture. So let's just consider um, our first point of design freedom. Um, with regard to design freedom, um, the sky is the limit, really, with regard to the design engineer and the design um, for additive layer manufacturing. Let me just show you uh, the following visual aid, just to explain what I mean. So here you can see we have some components uh, made from silver. And if you look at the two inboard samples, uh, look at the intricate um, internal structure. Uh, with additive layer manufacturing, you can use um, honeycomb internal structures, lattice work, um, mesh internal structures. So for the designer and the design engineer, he can produce some very complex, or he or she, I should say, can produce some very complex uh, internal structures using additive layer manufacturing. Uh, this next um, slide uh, shows um, uh, a particular component made from stainless steel. And again, look at the, the intricate complexity uh, of this particular product. Up until additive layer manufacture, this type of um, manufacturing would be very expensive or near on impossible using traditional methods. Uh, but with additive layer manufacturing, um, you can achieve so much more in terms of complexity. Here we have a titanium implant with a porous surface. Um, and within the surgical world, when that's implanted into a patient, uh, that porous surface can enable the human bone to knit with that surface beautifully. And again, this is possible as a result of additive layer manufacture. And just our final image, we have a combustion chamber. And again, another example of the type of um, complexity that can be built into our parts made from additive layer manufacture. So the, the, it's, it's absolutely wonderful what uh, a design engineer or a designer can now start to dream up now that he has uh, use and access to this type of additive layer manufacturing technology. Um, on this point though, what I'd like to just very briefly talk about is, is complexity and how complexity is free. Uh, now, what do I mean by that? Well, with regard to complexity, it's just as straightforward to build a complex part on the same bed as a part that is very basic. So complexity is free. It's very straightforward. Uh, so uh, again, for the designer, the, for the design engineer, um, he can get as complex as his imagination um, and the process will allow. Uh, so that's what uh, we mean by complexity is free. In addition, um, the designer or the, the design engineer, um, what they can do is to build parts with high specific strength or high specific stiffness in various areas of the components. 
and again, this was something that would be near on impossible with traditional uh, manufacturing methods. So additive layer manufacture can give you that competitive advantage. Let's move on to our next topic of materials. And with additive layer manufacture, we, we can use some very exotic materials. Here's an example of a nickel alloy stator segment. And what I find interesting about this, look at the surface finish that can be achieved um, using additive layer manufacture. You can now go down to, as is illustrated here, a quarter of a micron in terms of roughness average uh, with additive layer manufacturing. A titanium hip cup, so another exotic material that can be used. Uh, and again, just illustrating the porous surface, allowing the human bone to knit beautifully and, um, uh, and, and very well with regard to this uh, particular part. Again, made possible because of additive layer manufacturing. On this topic as well of material, additive layer manufacturing, it enables the blending of materials uh, and gives the designer and the design engineer even control over the microstructure uh, of the material. Now, again, what do I mean by that? So use, uh, varying the, the dwell time of the laser or the electron beam using various scan path strategies, um, the designer and the design engineer can design to have a part that can have um, uh, uh, a, uh, an internal uh, stiffness and an internal strength uh, hitherto impossible with traditional um, manufacturing methods that they, they can vary that throughout the components so digital control over the microstructure uh, of the component uh, manufacturing improvements so this is qu quite interesting additive layer manufacturing makes it possible uh, to adjust your design, enabling to be made faster. So no expensive tooling, for example. So from design to manufacture, you can, you can reduce those lead times, reduce costs. Um, it's very cost effective. We can significantly, significantly reduce component and product inventory. And with that point, uh, the way we can do this is that an assembly of parts can be manufactured as one part. So this is the kind of capability that additive layer manufacturing can bring to the table. Um, we can reduce manufacturing ops. So no expensive tool setups, uh, jigs and fixtures. But we can reduce all of that. And in so doing, reduce costs and lead times um, using this type of manufacturing technology. And that's highlighted by that second point there or that next point. And then moving on to our final point on this subject, uh, we can save um, on material and energy waste. So additive layer manufacturing is very cost effective. Now we spoke about uh, quality in process monitoring, and there are three main methods where this can be achieved using additive layer manufacturing. We have laser ultrasound, and we've got infrared uh, thermography, and we've got optical tomography. These three methods uh, can be used uh, to monitor the additive layer manufacturing process real time. So that's a real step change when compared to traditional manufacturing methods where uh, inspection uh, is a post process, whereas with additive layer manufacturing, um, quality can be built right in into the process. So that's a real game changer using additive layer manufacturing. And just on, on our final point, uh, the top tips for design for additive uh, manufacture. So for the designer, uh, they need to think about additive layer manufacturing in terms of the process. What do they want to achieve from a particular process? For example, do you want a better surface finish do you want to maximize your mechanical properties of the part? Um, do you want to facilitate its cleaning post-processing? All that has to be borne in mind by the designer and the design engineer right at the start of the design process for additive manufacture. And again, it can mean saving time and money. And when we talk about design for the function of the part, uh, using uh, numerical ana analysis tools such as CFD, 
computational fluid dynamics, uh, FEA, uh, finite elements analysis simulation tools, uh, we can carry out things such as uh, topology optimization or gener generative design. Um, questions like these can be answered using the type of um, uh, numerical uh, analysis simulation tools that we have available on the CalMerit project that works very much hand in hand with additive layer manufacturing. Uh, part orientation and post-processing. Now this is quite, quite important. Um, as you know, with ALM, it induces stress as in, in, into, the, into the process, but that can be minimized by part orientation. So that's a consideration that the designer and the design engineer has to think about. Also, part orientation can improve the surface finish. So again, that's a consideration that the designer would have to think about as part of the design process. And we need to design to reduce as much post-processing as possible. So the designer knows that with this process, we need support structures. So that needs to be thought about. And can we reduce the amount of um, support structures uh, to reduce post-processing after the ad additive layer manufacturing process has been completed. Uh, one thing that the designer needs to avoid at all costs, if possible, are sharp corners. Hence, fillets are really, really important. Sharp corners are stress raisers, whereas fillets can eliminate a stress concentration. So the designer again needs to just think about this when using additive layer uh, manufacturing. And there is a trade-off between production time and surface finish and between production time and the mechanical properties. So again, this needs to be really thought about right at the, the, the start of the design process uh, by the designer and the design engineer when using design for additive layer manufacture. And though we try our very best to be right first time, the insurance policy is to pr print test samples. So that's quite important. So just to wrap this up, if you are an SME and you're interested in using additive layer manufacture as part of your manufacturing process, and you want to explore the advantages uh, of this technology, then come and talk to us at the CalMerit project team. And we have the subject matter experts and the equipment available to do a print orientation evaluation and a geometry check to identify risk and to optimize your design for additive layer manufacturing. Um, thank you very much. I'm uh, Dr. Claudio Bari, have a PhD in um, CMC composite materials from the University of Manchester, uh, 2013. Uh, I've been in the academia for 20 years now, um, coming back from Germany where I did my education and I grow up. Uh, been here in the UK since 16 years. Uh, currently, as Bernati mentioned, I am the uh, principal lecturer and uh, composite lead researcher in the School of Engineering. Now, in front of you is a virtual, um, what we call it um, in manufacturing, is a digital twin. So a digital twin will show you the School of Engineering. Um, you can see them um, from, from the top. Uh, by the way, we can measure the, the distance as well. So the School of Engineering is about 60 meter by uh, 60 meter. So that is not a uh, big uh, dimensions. Uh, so that is what telling you um, our school. And I, there is a, a variety of uh, fluid labs and uh, additive layer manufacturing and uh, uh, mechatronics, and we have a composites lab here. Uh, we have SLA as well. So I'm going to go through them, uh, machine shop, I'm going to go through them um, one by one. Uh, so um, my main interest is uh, CMC uh, composites, uh, which we have uh, many uh, research collaboration uh, in Europe, in particular in Germany and 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 Belgium and also here in Shropshire. So let me go through the, through the School of Engineering. So that is the entrance of our school. 
and coming inside inside apology there will be some delay uh, that is due to the the, the fire the, 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 the wi-fi so let me show you a very interesting um, uh, movie um, that software developed by the way in the school of engineering so that is our equipment here That's our uh, motorsport, that's our drivers, that's our students, that's our ALM. Mercedes, Morgan uh, are our partners. That's uh, Mechatronic Lab. We are actually learning more about programming, learning about the mechanical part of drones, how to build them, control them. You can hardly think of anything these days that doesn't have electronics in it. Well, we, we, I, 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 I assist the students in avionics, so and they link course content. Building a drone and, and, and building okay, well, aerospace modules. Is the variety, so we're doing a bit of everything, maths, engineering, science, computer edit design work. <laughs> Okay, so that is a short introduction. So let's proceed. Uh, you can see from here our uh, first race car 10 years ago. Um, we can zoom in and see these all parts. Uh, so that is uh, the entrance of our school. And that here you can see the prizes that we won uh, so far. And um, uh, so let me see them. So that is the whole. Um, prices so if we proceed uh, forward as i said there will be some delay uh, but uh, please uh, bear with me due to um, uh, wi-fi connections okay so we are now in the um, in the um, school of in the life manufacture area let me show you the slide so that is the life project area uh, which is a large work environment, as you see them for practical uh, activities, uh, lab sessions, dedicated day for each activity, and commonly used by our race team, which is UWR. It's a famous uh, race team, and we are the only university that in the UK that participating in F3 Formula Car uh, for motorsport uh, championships, and it's also a house of all vehicle. Uh, uh, for the activities of the university uh, takes part in, in, and also provide a clean and impressive work uh, space for all students. Uh, by the way, that floor cost us £25,000 just to make the, the floor specifically uh, to, to have uh, heavy equipment uh, and so on. Um, so that is a clean and impressive workspace for students to work in a similar uh, and to uh, an, a high and racing team. Students across all discipline of engineering can utilize this part. So we are inclusive. We can include uh, any student from any background uh, to. So you can see, see them here. That is the, uh, the Morgan uh, Plus car, famous British car, and um, there is a, a competition and we manufacture this car actually in our school. We have, we manufactured that school, uh, this car in our school uh, uh, four years ago. Um, also, we can see here that is the, the full motion uh, racing simulator that costs us 30,000 uh, pounds. That gives you a 3D uh, animation what's going on you can optimize weather environment uh, rain temperature even vibration the seats when when when, when the driver sits there uh, and there is an incline right or left the, the seats will 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 behave um, um, as it's supposed to be now if we go to my favorite area that is obviously uh, not the composite area and my favorite area is the is the machining area because the guys they work in a composite uh, the heartbeat of a 
of a composite in a, is a mold. And in order to make an accurate mold, you need to have an accurate CNC machine. Uh, I, am, I, I have learned to do machining because of uh, I need to have a specific mold for, uh, for a composite. So I start to uh, do uh, uh, machining from our HECO uh, Winmax 10. Uh, that is the high value manufacturing area, is the home of many machines ranging from 3D. That is what you see here is the 3D axis. And that is the five axes. Uh, uh, electrical discharge machining, EDM, that is where we use for the uh, 3D printing part to separate them from the building, uh, 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 building plate. And also there is uh, uh, two CNC training, uh, training machines. So if we proceed there, and you can see these terminals here, and that terminal showing you how to uh, develop NC program for your mold. Uh, you can see I have developed several uh, mold here and we have uh, collaborations with a quick grind and tangaloy. That is what they provide us with, um, with a cutting tool, actually very high quality tools uh, that enable us to do this um, part. That mold can be up to 1.5 meters. Okay, so if uh, so, that is our heart beating area, what you just saw now. If we proceed to our um, composites, um, so let's walk here um, and enter to the composite. So that is our composite lab, and you see here our autoclave. That is the most important part uh, with a dimension of 1.2 by two meter in length, the autoclave, that is by the way, VFE autoclave. The autoclave is essentially a large pressure oven designed for curing resin based material that are generally led in sheet form into a mold. A sheet, for example, um, it can be, we call it pre-preg, uh, it could be uh, uncured carbon fiber composites uh, pressed into a shaped mold and the mold are placed into a vacuum bag and the air is evacuated and then part and the mold are placed into an autoclave. The air in the chamber is pumped out uh, uh, and the initial space then filled with nitrogen. So be careful, we are using nitrogen. And the reason why, because we are using flammable matrices that require using ni nitrogen. Uh, now, surprisingly, now I'm telling you the parameter of the autoclave, the autoclave can operate up to 400 degrees centigrade. That is far high from the usual and with internal pressure also far high from the usual 27 bar. And the reason why, because we are using thermoplastics that they need these temperatures and they need these pressures. And uh, uh, also, uh, there's a note here making this is only two autoclave with this extended operating range in the UK. Uh, and I am responsible for this statement. Um, so that is the composite slab, uh, as you see them here. If we proceed, uh, we can see the uh, Zund, um, uh, let me stand in front of Zund cutting. Uh, that is Zund L2500, uh, that's made by famous Swiss family business um, more than 100 years. Uh, so that is where we cut our pre-prec uh, here, and we have the software that cut that, that pre-prec in a accurate up to 0.1 millimeter. And these are the two freezers where we keep our pre-prec. Uh, Mainly, I sort them out ac according to their GSM. So anything mm, around 100 or below, I keep them in one freezer. Anything above well, above 100 GSM, I keep them in there. And there is also one bigger freezer for uh, use them for pre-prec ceramics as well, because we use pre-prec ceramics, in particular Nextel fibers and um, uh, and other fibers as well, glass fibers. Uh, okay, so that is our our um, uh, our composite lab, and if we go now in that spot, so I want to go to that spot, but that bring me to the heart of the school, and if I go just jump here from floor one to floor two, 
And that will bring me automatically to our additive layer manufacturing, where we can see um, the second, uh, um, probably that room in front of you costs us about 2 million pounds because there are two AOS additive layer manufacturing. And that is inside these cabins. What you just see now is a number of a component uh, that uh, have been manufactured in-house using additive manufacturing process, mainly SLM or SLA uh, or SLS. Uh, so these parts range from test component to our research pieces and uh, even part that is manufactured, mainly we manufacture them for our formula students. So instead of paying a few thousand pounds for third party, we just manufacture them here and it costs us around uh, something around 1,000 pounds per, per part if we use TI-64. Uh, so they show a wide range of techniques of uh, cutting edges uh, technology and the students are uh, learning. And as my colleague were saying about uh, bone implant, so I did a few trials for bone implant and we deliver them, by the way, to, um, to, to uh, Birmingham, Royal Hospital, where they try to have a bone implant. Uh, probably, uh, I wanted to zoom in to show you here, but uh, uh, let me try. Okay, so that is the maximum. I want to show you that bone implant because these uh, 30, uh, 30, 30 type of bone implants, we I use TI-64 for printing them in different letter structure and de depending on the stiffness of the human bone, which is range between 10 to 20 gigapascal. So we tailor, as my colleague was saying, we tailor the stiffness of the material to, uh, to fit into the, 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 the tibia or the firmer uh, bone uh, that particularly if the bone has cancer, so, so the, the replacements would be viable because of, as you know, titanium is, is uh, very uh, stable, very inert. There is no corrosion, there is no toxicity. And also there is uh, osteogenic, as my colleague were explaining, but the, the process of osteogenic that the, 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 uh, the bone will start uh, generate bone within the porous uh, due, to the, due to the process of osteogenics. And also here you can see that we sort them out uh, uh, engineering uh, toys and uh, um, probes and sport and medical additives. So we sort them out. But if we jump in inside, uh, uh, let me stand in front of our EOS uh, machine. And that is EOS, uh, as you're aware, made in Germany. And EOS stands for electrical optical system. Uh, why they call them optical system? Well, because of they earn money from designing laser processes or laser uh, optical um, generators that is very expensive, hence they are. So you can see that the machine currently in operation and that display showing you the part are being completed. So that here green uh, showing you the part is almost 80% has been completed. So there is 20% to go and the part here, you can see that what is the the progress. So that is the our EOS 290, which is the chamber is 290 by 290. Uh, we have a smaller one, smaller EOS, which is 250, two, sorry, 270. And the 270 is about 250 by 250 chamber. Uh, and we are using the, the, the powder and that powder. By the way, these powders must be used. We must buy them from, from EOS because these are uh, ensure that the warranty will be in place. So we are doing a lot of work. We did a lot of work for Formula Car, Mercedes Formula Car, and uh, Morgan Formula Cars. And uh, so we have a very good experience in that, uh, in that uh, field. So you can see these are sieves for the, um, for the powder. Here is the post-processing where we clean them. And um, sometimes we use also uh, some um, toxic chemicals just to clear post-processing them. And as my colleague was saying about stresses, uh, these are residual stresses. And these residual stresses, we have a special oven. You can see that oven here. We heat them up to three hours uh, and, uh, for 600 degrees centigrade. 
to decrease the residual stress and make the component as ductile uh, as possible. So that is um, the, the part which uh, I wanted to show you. And uh, if we go back now to the first floor, uh, hopefully that uh, we still have time. Um, so we can show you the, the other part, which is um, the metrology lab. That is, uh, that metrology lab, let me go inside. Okay. So that is here. Uh, okay, so that is the metrology lab. It is small room, but as you see them here, that we, we have here is the CT scanner. So that is, let me show you my slide. So that is the metrology lab offer a clean temperature environment, clean temperature that we have a control, a control temperature here uh, to allow precise analyzing and measuring uh, to be undertaken of the engineering course module with the various equipment ranging from CT scanner, that is a, a Brooker CT scanner, uh, costs 550,000 pound, uh, because we can go up to sub-micron, basically I go up to uh, 500 nanometer uh, in that to, to scan, to see the fiber, to see the, 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 the cohesion layer between the fibers and the matrix, because that is my area in composites. Um, and you can see also uh, some uh, Faro laser CMM here, we used to generate a CAD module, and there is probably, if I go in that spot and uh, go to the another CMM machine, that is upper link CMM, where we see here, we have a, let me zoom in, there is a, okay. So that is an exhaust made from material in Cornell that we printed for a famous uh, motorsport company where they want their exhaust to be printed in, in Cornell and, um, particular surface, particular geometry as well. So you can see them here that we measure them. We see whether that is also bracket. Uh, hopefully that I can zoom in maximum. Okay, that is, by the way, that bracket is we have machined it using our CNC machine uh, that is made from titanium because an aerospace company come to us and they ask us whether we can machine titanium and as you're aware, titanium machining is a nightmare in, in terms of not on in term of not in terms of only hazard and fire, but in terms of precision and in terms of um, tools that we are using to machine titanium. Okay, and uh, I think um, the the main um, long story short uh, about my activity here, we are all the time happy to make. Uh, um, a prototype for a companies, if that uh, prototype will be approved within the, our internal uh, Calmeric meeting, we are happy to make a uh, um, prototype. And also I have some uh, feedback from, I was in Germany last week and I had a meeting with a few companies and uh, most of companies, they were telling me we have three priorities at the meantime. Uh, the first priority is the employment uh, employee wages. They need to pay to their employee first, this is priority one. Second, they would like to have high value manufacturing. It could be a few hundred part a year, but they can still earn money for, from that. So it doesn't need to be thousands. And the third one, they would like to have an inexpensive prototype probably something like uh, 100 or, or few hundred or few thousand pounds to look forward to the next year when the current situation will be, will be, uh, will be better. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you, Junior and Claudio. I didn't know anything about composites or ALM, but you know, as a project manager, I've learned quite a lot today. <laughs> so uh, I'm not gonna take much of your time because obviously Junior and Claudio and the rest of the team on Calmeric are the experts that can talk um, all about the technical support that's available to yourselves as um, uh, small medium enterprises. First of all, everybody always says to me, what's Calmeric? It's such a big acronym. So 
we, we, what I want to explain is if you look at calm and then Eric, so calm bit is obviously composites and additive layer materials um, is the project and the engineering research and innovation centre is what Claudio has given us um, a viewing of at the moment. So the project itself, it, it is a government funded project um, and, you know, it's available to support companies geographically based in certain areas, but we do cover Telford and Rekin, we cover Staffordshire and Shropshire areas, Stoke-on-Trent and the Marches. So what are the main aims and objectives? Um, to provide advanced engineering and manufacturing companies with an opportunity to develop high performance components that are lightweight um, and that make efficient use of materials. So ideally, it's, it's going to benefit those type of companies that don't currently have the in-house facilities and resources to do any of the things that you may want to do. So it's about innovation. It's looking at how you currently are manufacturing components and parts. Um, how could you manufacture them? You know, could you use lighter weight? Could you use, make more use of efficient materials? Yes, you could, but at the end of the day, you may not have the resources to do the testing or to have the resources and equipment that we have got at the, the Research and Innovation Centre, which part of Calmeric would support you with. Um, we, we've got a focus there, which says it's particularly relevant to businesses operating in, in aerospace, automotive, motorsport and wind energy supply chains. Yes, ideally. But the project is focused around supporting small to medium enterprises. Um, and you'll find with some of those sectors there that I mentioned, they often end up being quite large organisations with a larger annual turnover um, and, and many supply chain. So, you know, don't be put off by the fact it says those sectors. I think, you know, we can support more or less anybody in the engineering, in the high value engineering or manufacturing sector. All it's going to take is just a quick chat to us, a quick phone call, have a conversation with me. Um, and I'll bring Junior on board, who's our, um, you know, uh, expertise in that area. And we'll be able to sort of at least draw out something that we can support you uh, through the project itself. OK. So what are the benefits? And, and I know we've talked, we know composites is, is benefits. We know additive layer manufacturing, additive layer materials, uh, services and benefits. So ideally, you will get advanced and technical support. So we've got a team of experts within the university who are academics. We've got researchers that we've employed on the project who will sit and do the research to support the scoping of your project. Um, and then we've got knowledge transfer expertise and knowledge transfer leads. So there's a whole team involved in the services that um, could provide your project support really to achieve what you need to achieve. Um, engineering analysis and design, you know, we, the project itself will work on a business support based on what your scope is once you've identified what you, you want us to research for you. Um, and, and we will do all the analysis and design for you and come up with recommendations and come up with findings. We'll present them to you and then we'll go back to the drawing board again once we've all got a mutual agreement on is this exactly what we're looking at. But no, I want to do it a different way. That's absolutely fine. Um, and that's all part of that academic support that's available within the university and a government funded project as well. Prototyping, we, we, we do, if you have a concept, we will support with that, that concept to bring it to a prototype for you. Uh, I must say that we don't offer any grant funding for the prototype, but there are other partners, in, partners out there and other service providers that we work very, very closely with. Um, we can bring that concept um, and do a technical report to say, this is what you would need to bring and produce a prototype. Um, and at that point, we would refer you to one of our colleagues who will, who could support you with some funds and grant funding to actually bring, um, uh, to support that prototype and bring that new product to market. So not a problem, but we can still do the analysis and that report for you of what exactly you would need and do some testing for you as well. 
research and innovation, obviously, um, the project's very, very much focused on not just doing a small business support with you and then leaving you to that. We want to take that project scope and that project definition to a higher level. We want to obtain as a university some feasibility studies out of this. We want some of those uh, feasibility studies to be part of the university agenda of supporting university PhDs and graduates and anybody and have that information on the bookshelves that this is what we actually did. So there is an opportunity on the project to actually get involved into a real time long term research collaboration as well. Um, and again, like I said, access to academic specialist skills and resources, that's always there on the board. We've got an, a team, like I said, on board that will discuss your project with you and internally of um, what exactly we can do. Material testing is part of it as well. And Claudia has took us round on a virtual tour of uh, the School of Engineering, where the Research and Innovation Centre is situated as well. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of equipment there that's available for us to carry out almost everything and anything that's uh, put to us really and I'm not going to mention that because I have no idea what that is but we do that apparently so that's good as well <laughs> okay so well, I, I just wanted to point out what the project outputs are so it often enough when you get ERDF funded projects you do end up having quite a lot of outputs um, and I think it kind of we kind of defeat the object of quality when we have so many outputs. So this project and why I was very much interested in this project, it's all about quality, uh, not about quantity. So we've got a three year project which is funded starting in January 2019. It ends in December 2021. And we have to support only 36 small medium enterprises to be able to access our technical knowledge and have some um, a business assist. And a business assist can be anything from up to 12 to 20 hours of free support from our academic expertise and team who will put together a technical report um, and present that to yourself based on what your project needs and what your project scope is. Um, there's some support available there to actually scope a project for you if you've got an idea. So please come along and, and you know, speak to us. Uh, we will be the right people or the team with the people within the team will be the right people to be able to say, yes, it's a project we can support or no, it's not. But we know somebody else who can support it. So we won't just kind of just leave you there and say, sorry, go away. Uh, we haven't got time, but we will support you on your journey and possibly you'll come back to us as well, you know what I mean, at a point where we can support you. Um, part of those 36, we want to progress 24 of them into in-depth research collaborations. Um, this is obviously where we get to a stage, um, the businesses is great, the, the, there's an idea, there's a scope, there's a, a development there, there's a project there, but we actually want to go further by having those materials tested by using our resources and our equipment pull off those technical reports just like claudia said you know we've got simulation machines we've got ANSYS machines we've got everything fatigue testing machines um, non-destructive testing so these are all part of the project um, which will bring um, a lot more in depth uh, in-depth um, information for your research collaborations which will actually sort of give you the full journey right to the end and some of those research collaborations can be anything from two months to six months even longer but as long as we try and aim to achieve them by the end of December so it just depends on what your project is um, for those research collaborations again the full academic support and expertise is all free to you. Um, the, the review meetings, uh, the regular contact, the feedback meetings, the recommendations, an ongoing relationship um, is, is all free to yourself. The only thing we would say if you, your project did develop into a research collaboration, there is a small element of where we expect the business, the SME to pay for the materials cost. So uh, we will use all our resources and facilities for you and equipment and machinery. But you know, we would we would expect the um, SME to support us with any material costs or any 
program or software or anything that you would need to purchase to enable what we've scoped out for you to be embedded into your business longer term. And, and we can discuss that with yourselves anyway. And it's not financial money that comes into the university. We just need to see you spend that money. It's kind of like a match. So SME match funding. So you stays with you, but we just need to record that there's been some spend invested into the research collaboration from yourself. And then hopefully we will, um, another output is that we will hopefully maybe get some new uh, firm uh, product brought to firm. So we've got six outputs and you never know, we could bring out a new product, which is an absolute massive, great success story and case study for a partnership with Calmeric um, and the university. So that would be a really good benefit for us as well. So just to quickly let you know, I know Claudia talked about this. So we have as part of the project invested and we have got a budget of 143K and we have invested that in, in purchasing uh, capital equipment. So, you know, four of the big items are the, the composites, compression molding machine, the teak testing machine, as I mentioned, non-destructive testing machine and the high performance numerical analysis workstation. I call it a super duper computer because when it arrived, um, it was just nothing more than a, a super duper PC or desktop. And I thought, oh, what is that? But uh, apparently it costs a lot of money and it does a lot more than uh, an average computer will do for you. <laughs> okay, so like I said, project runs from January 2019 to December 2021. We have lost a year because of COVID. Um, and I think there's going to be a big push. And I think, you know, we will be putting in an extension for it. Um, and you know, fingers crossed, there's a bit of underspend and they don't, we don't, nobody likes to return funds back to the, the European Regional Development Fund. They want us to spend it. So there's a likelihood we will be successful in an extension of that. And again, like I said, we, we've we um, achieved a couple of really good research collaborations on the project. And I think a couple of the companies may be on this, um, this virtual webinar today. So uh, really looking forward to the results on that. Um, and I think, you know, it's um, it's nice that we were able to really sing and dance about some really good work that's taken place. So if you're in Staffordshire, Shropshire, Telford and Recon, you need to give me a call and we can have a chat and I can do some eligibility checks. It's postcode checks, but I'll be able to tell you straight away if you are um, eligible in those areas. So finally, for me, it's just I'll leave that page up there for you of how to get in touch. Uh, you can email me, phone numbers there, and my mobile. If you go onto our website pages, um, there is an online inquiry form for you as well, which you can fill, which will come directly into my email box, um, and or you can follow us on Twitter. But you know, I just think to round this up, this is all about growth and business growth, and we've invested in this project in those geographical areas because they're transitional areas. And the government and the local LEPs and the local authorities are very keen to support um, the growth in these type of sectors and businesses through this project. Um, and all you've got to think about is if, if you did ever want to go out and use external providers to pay for some materials testing or some use of some equipment um, that we've talked about, it could cost you thousands. Um, and this is what the project's there. The project is there for those companies that haven't got those in-house resources and equipment to come to us at Calmeric and um, we can uh, support you with that. 